What is better than a free fat quarter quilt pattern that is quick and easy? Okay, how about a free fat quarter quilt pattern that is not only quick and easy, but is also completely customizable so it looks different every time you make it? Yeah, that sounds a little bit better, doesn't it? Okay, so this quilt pattern was actually inspired by my layer cake quilt pattern. If you haven't taken a look at that quilt pattern, I will link it in the description below. But that quilt pattern was so much fun for me because it was really easy to assemble those blocks. I just cut slits in the layer cake and put some strips in there. It was so much fun. The only trouble with that pattern was is that if you want to be very, very accurate, it is tricky getting all those slits to match up very, very perfectly. So I thought, what if I took that idea but made it where it doesn't matter if all of your strips meet up? I think that would make it so much easier. So I did some different layout designs and I thought, you know what, it would be a lot easier to do this with a really, really big piece of fabric. Then you would have the ability to have variations in the size of strips. And after playing around a bit, it worked out really well with fat quarters. Plus, you only need 12 fat quarters. And these blocks are so big that the quilt comes together so quickly. I think you'll love it. So I'm gonna jump into the pattern for you, but be sure to check out the links down in the description because it'll take you to one of my blog posts about this quilt and it'll have all the measurements there for you to make it that much easier. So let's get started. So for fabric requirements for this quilt, it is very easy. You just need 12 fat quarters and you need two yards of background fabric. I made two different versions of this quilt and with the first quilt, I used some gorgeous fabric from the Sanctuary line of fabric. And I actually have these 12 fat quarters as well as, as well as the two yards of background fabric available in my Etsy shop. So if you wanna make a quilt just like this one that is very neutral, then check out that bundle. It will really give you a beautiful quilt. For the other version of this quilt, I used some random fat quarters in my stash. I really wanted you to be able to see how this quilt looked with different types of fabric. Fabric that's perfectly coordinated together and then fabric that is bright and fun and has a bunch of different florals and colors on it. That way you could get an idea of how it would look with any fabric you might have in your stash. Hopefully get an idea anyway. So the first thing I did with this quilt was I prepped all my fabric. For me that means I'm going to starch my fabric and then I'm going to press the fabric. I really like to starch my fabric first before I work on a project because I feel like it gives me a nice finish on the quilt. I feel like the fabric's a little bit more easy to work with, especially if I'm sewing a lot of long strips because sometimes I can get a little bit wonky and having nice kind of stiffer fabric really helps me keep everything in line a little bit better. At least that's how I feel. So once I had all of my fabric prepped and ready to go, it was time to start cutting. Now the fat quarters are really easy to cut to begin with because they're all cut to the same size. I like to stack three fat quarters together at a time because of how I cut them later with the strips. I liked having a variety of stripped differentiations on this block and I'll show that a little bit more later. So it was a lot easier to organize them in groups of threes. Now I cut my fabric down for this project to 15 inches by 20 inches. So you are going to lose a little bit of your fat quarter. I tossed that into my scrap bin. Um, I will have a project coming up soon for scraps of fabric. So keep them close by. <laughs> now from the background fabric, I kept it folded in half where kind of the selvages are together. And then I folded it together again, again with the raw edges uh, together. So once I did that, I had four layers of fabric that I'd be cutting from. 
From this fabric, you are going to square it up on the, for me, it was on the left side where the raw edges of the fabric were, and then I trimmed off the selvages. Then I cut the fabric so that it was 20 inches long, so I'd have 20 inches strips. Now, from that, you're going to make a lot of cuts, and you're going to have 12 of each of the cut widths. So you're going to end up with fabric that is one inch by 20 inches, and you'll want 12 of those. You'll have 12 that are 1.5 inches by 20 inches. Then you're going to have 12 that are two inches by 20 inches. Then you're going to have 12 that are 2.5 inches by 20 inches. And then you're going to have 12 that are three inches by 20 inches. Now, one of each of these sizes is going to be used in each of your fat quarters. So that's why you have 12 of them and it's really easy to keep track of those, I think. <laughs> now for the block assembly, like I said, I kept those fat quarters together in bundles of three. But the nice thing about this pattern is that you can really do a lot of different things with it. You don't have to have any block that looks the same if you don't want to. Just the rule will be from each fat quarter along the 20 inch length of it, you're going to be cutting five slits. Now, how I like to do it in mine was I cut slits that are the same width of those, those uh, strips from the background. So on some of them, I cut a um, one inch strip, a 1.5 inch strip, a two inch strip, a 2.5 inch strip, and then a three inch strip. I did that on six of the fat quarters. And then I just varied how I laid out those strips within them. Some of them I went from the small background strip up to the large in those slits from the fat quarters. And some of them I went from the large to the small. So that kind of changed the look of the block just by varying how those strips were placed. Now I have a bunch of broken down boxes in my house and using those to lay out my blocks was really, really helpful for this large size project. Maybe if you have a nice foam board or something like that, it would work as well. It really is handy to keep this block all together like that. Now, one of the other variations I did for this block was cutting six of the fat quarters um, with the same width of strip. So I cut a one and a half inch strip from the 20 inch side, a one and a half inch strip, and I did that five times. Then I laid out those background strips in there, varying how they were as well. So this gives you a nice variety of blocks. All right, so here are my strips for three different blocks. You can see I have three different fat quarters here. I like to work in groups of three on this project. So I have the blocks laid out in order and all the strips laid out so that I can easily sew them together. Now, as I showed you, there's a lot of different ways that you could lay this block out in a couple different ways you can cut the slits so that you can get a different look on your blocks. But there's still something else you could do to really customize this block and customize your quilt to make it look different every single time you do it. So one of the things you can do is rotate the fabric. So since I'm working in three, you could take a few of these and rotate the fabric out so that some of the some of these slits are different fabrics and it'll give the quilt a completely different look because you each block doesn't have all of the same fat quarter color in it. So just keep that in mind as you assemble this quilt. There's a lot of different things you could do aside from just keeping your background going in different orders. Like you remember I had the um, background fabric in this one start from large and go small as well. It's just simple changes like that can change the look. You could take these out of order where they're not going small to large or large to small. 
You could have it completely random. There's a lot of things you can do to completely customize this block and that's what makes it so much fun. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the fabric in the same order and keep my blocks the same, but it was just something that I really wanted to show you to give you some other ideas on how you could make this pattern your own and make it completely different. So these strips, you're just going to sew together in order. It is very, very simple and easy sewing. Nothing complicated to it. We're not making half square triangles. We're not making star blocks. So easy. Just every other piece <laughs> makes it so simple. Just have a fat corner, a background, fat corner, background. Even if you got them out of order, as long as they're, they're um, going fat quarter, background, fat quarter, background, it won't matter. All right, so I'm gonna get this sewn up and then I'll show you how I press my blocks. the block all sewn together and I go ahead and I press the seams all toward the fat quarter fabric because that's a little bit darker than my background fabric and it's just a nice way to kind of you know hide the seams a little bit so they don't so you don't see them through on the solid fabric now for this particular quilt it doesn't really matter how you press the seams because you're not going to be joining the seams together at this time. So whatever you feel comfortable with is fine. If you wanna press them open, if you wanna press them all in the same direction, it's kind of up to you and what feels right. Now, this block should measure ideally 20 inches by 20 inches after you sew all the strips together. However, if you are like me and you may be your mind wanders when you're sewing a little bit or you don't press perfectly, it may not come out to exactly 20 inches by 20 inches. I usually get it to measure that in one direction and not the other because my sewing is a little bit off. So all you have to do is check the measurements on all your blocks and just trim it to the smallest size you have. For me, this time around on this quilt with these fabrics, my Measurements came out to about 19 and a half by 19 and a half. On the first one I did with the neutral colors, I was a little more careful, and that one came out to 19 and three quarters by 19 and three quarters when I trimmed it down. So just trim them all down to the exact same size and you'll be okay. If you are a lot more careful than I am, you might not have to and you might get a 20 inches by 20 inches. That would be ideal because then you don't have to trim everything. So then just start finishing up all your blocks. So I'm starting to get them all nice and pressed and trimmed up and they're turning out so lovely. I really love the look of this quilt. Now, the fun thing about this is because they're all perfect squares and you don't have really anything that needs to meet up, there's so many different ways you could lay them out. I mean, you could just keep them all with the the strips going in one direction. You could vary them. You could keep them all going up and down. And then when you get to your next row, you could alternate the wider end to go on different sides. There are so many different ways you could lay out this quilt. And it makes it a lot of fun because each time you make it, you could do something a little bit more different with it. Um, I really hope that you give this quilt a try. It is a lot of fun and you can really change up your slit widths and all of that. All you need to do is make sure you add in these sizes of background fabric to get the block the right size to be able to cut it to a perfect square. So 
I'm going to finish up all my blocks and I'll show you a few layout ideas and I'll also show you my finished layout design with this quilt as well. But once you get all 12 of these blocks finished, you really just need to lay them out in an order you like, sew the rows together, and then sew, yeah, sew your blocks in the row together. There should be three blocks to each row in four rows, and then you'll bring all those rows together as well. It's a really quick quilt. I mean, it does seem like a lot of sewing because of all these strips, but it is really easy because there's not a lot of intricate piecing to it. So I'm gonna finish it up and show you the layouts I did. All right, so here is my quilt all finished. This is the neutral one. And like I said, I have fabric for that one available in my Etsy shop. And then here is my quilt using all fat quarters from my stash. So I think both of them turn out really, really gorgeous. Even if these fabrics don't necessarily go together, I think it really is a beautiful quilt. And it's a fun way to get a quilt made using fabric from your stash very, very quickly. And also still being able to highlight the fabric that you use because there are plenty of spaces on here where the fabric can be seen really, really well and all of the uh, patterns on it. So I hope you enjoyed this free fat quarter pattern. If you do make this quilt, I'd love to hear what you think of how yours turned out in the comments below, or you can tag me on Instagram or show, share a picture in the Facebook group. Links to those will be down in the description of this video as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.